But if no one talks to me in the room that I walk in, even if it's just one person, I'm gonna be so sad. <sighs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Meza. You are actually gonna be hearing this today. Probably for the first time on my channel. I actually kind of can talk about this forever and ever, but I do want to talk about it because to me, it's a very interesting topic. It's a topic normally when people ask me in public or on the spot, I normally don't have an answer right then and there. I normally actually don't have a thought out answer just on hand. So I kind of want to do a video about this, maybe to just clear up a few things from my past and make things simpler for at least the people who are going to be watching me. I mean, some of y'all are probably curious. Why did I learn Spanish at such a late age? Most people who know me in person might know that I have a father who is from Mexico. He's from Mexico, so I'm like first generation Mexican in this country on his side. Little fact about me is I've worked in a Mexican restaurant. I've been to Mexico about six, seven times. I've attended a Hispanic church. A lot of my content is kind of Mexican oriented, but the honest truth is I didn't really learn Spanish at all until I was at least about 18 or 19 years old. Part of that is uh, complicated, some of it's not, and uh, I'm, I'll explain why it's not, because a lot of the younger Hispanics in this nation and the United States kind of get a little bit of a stigma for not knowing as good a Spanish as the last generation did or maybe the generations before them. And I'm gonna talk about that because I feel like I've gone through like every phase what it's like to be a kid born in America that didn't learn his parents' first language. My parents, uh, like I said before, my dad's Mexican. My mother, she's a white woman from here in the great United States. I was the first born, and when I was born, my parents were both talking to me in their native tongues. My mom spoke to me in English, my father spoke to me in Spanish. However, as I was able to respond back, at first it was it was expected, you know, a little kid. When you're speaking to them, you know that they're only gonna respond back what they've ever heard. But eventually, it gets to the point where the kid is speaking sentences. Apparently, according to my parents, when I began to speak in sentences, that's when the problem happened. And by problem, I mean, mommy, I quiero ir a la Walmart, please. My sentences would get mixed up, the language would get mixed in, and also, a fact about myself, I actually didn't learn to speak English or Spanish until I was about four. Most kids learn how to talk, maybe say their first like real words at like one, two years old, and by three they're talking in sentences. No, I was about four when I was like learning my first full sentences. In fact, whenever I went to school, they had to test me because they were worried, you know, was I not able to comprehend? Was I not gonna be able to speak English? So basically it was just kind of decided in the family, don't, don't teach Dylan any more Spanish. And my dad stopped. And then also on top of that, it wasn't just that my dad, my dad didn't like run off and like he didn't exist in my life again. Like about four or five years old, my father decides, well, I'm gonna start my own business, but I can't start it here in the state that I was born in, Mississippi. My mother wasn't ready to leave. I mean, there was no just up and leaving. So my father's like, I'm gonna move to North Carolina. I'm gonna start my business. Whenever I've got enough money, I'm paying for y'all to come up here and y'all gonna live up here. So anyways, my dad just up and down in like the age of three to five, I don't have my father around to speak Spanish to me. My father isn't around to, you know, tell me what to do in Spanish. He's not uh, really there in the way that like some kids who don't have a father experience like i have those experiences i remember being real little and it's just me and my mom in a car and she's worried to death and there i am as a little boy who thinks completely different than her but naturally mom always had everything under control basically didn't have a parent just speaking Spanish in the household to me, even though it was really well expected in my life. Like, yo, Dylan, like, your dad's like full Mexican. Why are you not speaking Spanish? Well, I mean, one, I just didn't have a parent that spoke Spanish living in the house all my life. I just didn't. So from like five to eight, and then from 10 to about, 
until I moved to college when I was about 20. I did have my father in my life again, like full time, but even then, this is where like part two of why I didn't learn Spanish really came in. And it was simply, I was American. I was American. I was, I grew up in America. Everybody spoke English. If you didn't speak English, you know, you need to learn it. Get out of my country. You know, that, that, that's, that's how I thought. I thought that way for a long, long, long time. Like, I seriously felt that way. I felt like it was okay for me to tell somebody, hey, like, you got to learn our language. And it was as simple as that. And it was it was really uh it was really easy whenever i was around my friends and my family the friend that was from here but it was very difficult whenever i would experience um when i would actually meet people who were struggling to speak english that was when i first had my breakthrough of like oh, okay you can't you can't just be that way because one you should be speaking Spanish but you don't and I said and I'm saying that even though I told you my dad was not in the picture my dad was not there I am gonna tell you this the the flip side of it I nobody cared like according to anyone else I had no excuse like I had no excuse not to be speaking Spanish and like I'm telling y'all now, but because it's so long a story, I can't really just tell people, hey, move for like 10 minutes. Like, that's why I don't speak Spanish. Um, so yeah, my dad was in my life again for about another 10 years, but by that time I just I already didn't want to learn it. And I was I was pretty okay with my life not speaking it. Um and Probably the most stubborn I ever was, was one, my dad would make me go work jobs. And this is where number three comes in. Number three starts about here. And it kind of still carries on to now, even though I am a little bit, I'm, I was going to tell you I'm a little bit more fluent than I give myself credit for now. But probably the third reason I didn't learn Spanish was growing up, my dad would send me to work with his construction workers. And I, my very first job where I didn't work for my father, I actually was working for a Mexican restaurant in town, a very popular one. And the whole staff, they knew my father was my father, uh, both at the restaurant and in my dad's company, of course, you know. <laughs> I was picked on a good bit. Like, why are you not learning Spanish? Why are you not speaking Spanish? But in the whole time, I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, why do I got to learn Spanish to be around y'all? You know, I don't want to be around y'all. I don't want to, I don't want a construction job when I get older. I don't want to work in a Mexican restaurant when I get older. Why do I got to learn Spanish for you guys? And I was, I was pretty like hell bent on it. I did not like, and I still don't like to this day, for people who really are not important in my life to just tell me that like I should learn it because I have to be around you. And it's not really because I feel like they do that to Americans. I just feel like Americans and Mexicans do the same thing to each other. I don't like anyone being that way. You know, I, at the end of the day, I think it's just more important to communicate than it actually is to actually, you know, oppress people. You know, it's, it's better to just be a decent human being. I had those jobs for my dad growing up. Uh, I had, Even after I quit the Mexican restaurant job, I still had to work for my dad. But I was about 17, 18 years old. My father had been begging my mom for years and years saying, I want Dylan to come to Mexico. I want him to learn Spanish. I need him to come. I mean, you know. My dad just wants to show off his, you know, his his, his first son, you know, his best. <laughs> I'm kidding, Grant. <laughs> my father's like around 17. He's like telling my mom, like when he turns 18 and if he wants to go, I'm taking him to Mexico. So like at 18, I was pretty much getting ready to go to Mexico. And 
whenever I went, like I, I went thinking being a tourist was okay. My cousin, who's actually on my white side, he's actually half Mexican as well. He went to Mexico like probably the the two years before that and he was just fine. I mean, he had a good time is what he told me. So I was like, oh, okay. He can go to Mexico and not speak Spanish. <laughs> The difference between my cousin and me is I am really, um, I hate saying I'm one of these. I'm very extroverted. I'm not like the most extroverted person in the world. Like I'm not going in a room and telling everybody they have to look at me. But if no one talks to me in the room that I walk in, even if it's just one person, I'm going to be so sad. <sighs> so yeah, there I am. I, I, I'm going to Mexico and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, you know, I, I, I didn't know how bad I was gonna need Spanish. I got down there, I think I took my Spanish one and two. By the way, I only took Spanish one and two in high school for easy classes, like easy A's. I'm not gonna act like I had like some like great standard and I was gonna be teaching myself Spanish. No, I was very like, I'm not learning Spanish. I don't have to learn this. So I got to Mexico and I'm 18 at the time. And you know, I on the way down there, I felt very like hopeful. And I felt like I was gonna be able to experience a lot of things because I hadn't been to Mexico since I was 11. So because I hadn't been to Mexico since I was 11, I hadn't been one as an adult and two with a real memory of what it was like. So like there I am, I'm down there and I'm thinking, oh, okay, like I kind of want to live my life like I do in the US, but I want to do it in Mexico. So like I want to go to the store. And at first, no one would let me leave my grandma's house without like a, like a translator. And like it was, it was okay, I guess, when the translator would be a cousin who's like my age. But it really sucked whenever they would be like, no, you can't go to the store without a translator. And there's my little cousin who's like, not even six. He's holding my hand and they're like, because he's with you, you get to speak, you get to go. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is embarrassing. But there I am, I'm going and I'm embarrassed by that. And also like, y'all, attraction is visual sometimes you know what i'm saying especially for men i'm a man so sometimes like i'd be down there and i would see a beautiful girl what am i supposed to do i don't speak spanish hola mujeres hola. that was me i'm not gonna lie i i regret catcalling like i if i could go back and never do that again i would feel better about myself as a person but i can't go back and do it Anyways, there I am. I'm just yelling because I don't know what to do. I actually meet women, but I have to like use a translator. Like I have to talk to somebody and tell them like, hey, blah, 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 you know, and then they have to translate that for me. Because in Mexico, when you go around Christmas time, enough people from the U.S. just show up. A lot of people are going for Christmas. So it's really easy to get somebody to just kind of like say everything that you want them to. But you can't really tell a girl like, hey, this is how I feel about you. What to your cousin and then your cousin tell her because one, he's uncomfortable. And two, he just might not want to say it. I literally would tell my cousin like, hey, this is what I need you to say. And he was like, I'm not saying that to her. So we had that dilemma. But really, at that point, I, if there is a if there is a point for was just I honestly thought ignorantly that I didn't need it if I was gonna go to Mexico. I didn't really even change too much after that. Um, I was 18 and it was Christmas time that year. I went there in the summer and I met a girl that summer. We would talk and I would use just a little bit of Spanish that I'd known like growing up and she would try to talk but most of it was just like showing me pictures and she would point at stuff and it kind of hit me like really hard. I was like, you know, it'd be nice because like, I don't really know how to tell her like how I feel about her. So I was like, well, I don't know what to do. So I was like, I, I, I just, I, I felt kind of stuck. And this, I'm only talking about this one girl. It probably happened with multiple, now that I think about it. Yeah, well, by the way, if you're like, 
if you're like ever just lonely, go to Mexico and tell women you're from America. They'll talk to you. I'm not gonna say you're gonna have luck, but I'm gonna tell you, they'll talk to you. You'll, you'll probably have some luck. And so I went again when I was 19 and I actually, me learning Spanish was actually a, uh, I probably will make a video just about it, but um, I'll go ahead and tell you why I decided like enough's enough, I have to learn it now. The girl was, that I, I was talking about the summer, I went to see her but my cousin came with me and she straight up was, and I knew enough Spanish to know that she was saying, oh, I don't really care for him, as in me. She was like, I care about him, my cousin. And I'm just sitting there and I feel like I look like a fool. I understand everything she's saying. And like she, I mean, I, I'll never tell y'all who this is because y'all are never going to find out who it is, but she like fat shamed me. Uh, she, you know, was talking about like uh, my weight. She was talking about me being, you know, not too attractive. And I'm just like, wow, I don't like this. And... I did change a lot of things after that trip. I actually came back from the US and I low carb dieted for like four months. I, I did Rosetta Stone for months and then when I went to the university I took a Spanish class that was uh, pretty rigorous in my opinion and um, told myself you can't watch cable unless it's in Spanish except for like maybe like 30 minutes a day you can watch Alvin and the Chickmunks. Go Alvin. But yeah like I. I at 19 years old was like, I'm gonna learn Spanish and I'm gonna learn enough that I may never be fluent, but I will never like let someone disrespect me in front of me like that ever again. And me not be able to at least say, you need to shut up. I know that's kind of harsh and it's kind of rude, but I mean, y'all, I lost like, I lost like 60 pounds in four months. That's a lot of weight really quick. And I, I worry that like some of the things that I'm not like, I worry about some of the things that like now, like I, I should be, you know, you lose all that weight. You think you're going to, you think you're going to be healthy forever. And then you're scared to ever diet again after that. I am very paranoid when I hear people speak Spanish now. Like I don't, I don't feel like I have too many friends and that even includes whenever I'm around my family who honestly probably truly loves me to death. That includes when I'm around my uh, my old co-workers or just people in my town that I grew up with that spoke Spanish. We worry so much about, you know, doing the right thing. And life is just not about right and wrong. Because we're human. And we have to talk and we have to communicate the best we can. Thank y'all for listening. I'm really glad y'all listened. I probably will do this video again. Not, not anytime soon. Like maybe 10 years from now I'll do it again. And maybe by then I'll have a different perspective. If I had done this video, you know, five years ago, the video would have been a lot shorter. And I would have just said, well, I didn't learn Spanish because my my family didn't let me and then I would have just told y'all I wanted to learn it because of uh, a girl that bullied me in Mexico and that would have been the whole story. I'm older now I've had time to reflect and there's a lot of things that go into it but uh, you know I'm not the only person who deals with this. A lot of people have a hard, a hard time understanding why they can't learn a second language. Um, before I did Rosetta Stone I really didn't understand that sometimes it's not that, you know, it, it took Rosetta Stone for me to realize there's not a right and wrong in Spanish, just as there's not a right and wrong in English sometimes. Like for instance, a grammatic rule in English may make 100% sense in one sentence, but it won't make sense in another sentence. And that's one reason people don't 
understand Spanish. They they get told that there's a feminine and a masculine, but really those are just big words to say, hey, you have to use the vowels differently at different times, but they don't say that. So what people get in their mind is, oh, well, if there's a masculine and a feminine, then I just need to look out for the masculine and feminine, and they understand that masculine and feminine means male and female, but really it can also mean at what time of the sentence or of what time are you using the word like i said there's no right and wrong it's just language is complex and language has its rules and honestly it takes it sometimes it just takes a little bit of just honestly just uh going into it with no preference of right and wrong like for instance like when you do the Rosetta Stone, there is a portion where you have to learn the words and then eventually you have to learn it without ever seeing them. By the time you get there, you're not really worried about necessarily are you using the word that's correct. Most of the time you're just trying to think, do I know when I should think about using a word and I know that that doesn't sound very concrete when I say it but um, it, 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 It's the same thing we do in English, you know um, Sometimes a, a word that we think is very common and the moment you you Really take time to think about it it's not a common word it's just one we've used all our lives if you're out there and you are struggling to learn spanish i tell you two tips that help me like i said already one go into it as if you just have no real like perception of what is right and wrong go into it like the rule there are no rules and two i i promise this will help and it's really hard to do it consistently, but find like something that's in that language that you can listen to or read that's written in Spanish. Like if you're learning Spanish, learn it in Spanish from a Spanish speaking author. You know, don't, don't do like what me and my cousin did. We used to watch pirated movies of like Nacho Libre and Happy Feet but they were like in Spanish and you know you could tell that they were never mouthing to like the English speaker that was definitely the movie was for. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I thank you everyone who watched the last video on my channel. Anyone who's been watching the last previous videos on my channel I'm trying to be consistent again. Uh, I know Vlogmas, I was very consistent as in 25 days in a row. I did see a pretty good um, increase in that. Uh, and I do want to put more content more regularly on here. That's why I'm doing a shot camera speech thing right now. But I honestly, I love vlogging. I do love vlogging. Um, vlogging, it's not really easy. It's actually really hard because, like I said, I, I, I hate saying I'm an extrovert, even though I technically am one, but I still, I don't like attention on me. I just like to be around people. So a lot of times when I'm walking around with a big camera in my hand, and, and when I say a big camera, the camera I'm filming on right now, y'all, it's, it's bigger than my hand. So like I'm walking around and I'm just, you know, talking to everyone and everyone's knowing that I'm filming, they don't want to be on camera or they don't want to hear themselves. Uh, I appreciate anyone who is watching these uh, these videos. I appreciate anyone that watches my vlogs. I hope that y'all stick around for more content. Sooner or later, I'm trying to buy equipment right now to do a weekly podcast, so that would at least alleviate um, you know breaks in the channel. But I mean, honestly, if my vlogs ever just pop off, I will stick to vlogging. That is my favorite content to do for y'all. Uh, I do know that y'all do actually like, and I don't know who you are, uh, you don't comment, but whoever you are that likes this, uh, a lot of times my videos do way better if all I do is put the camera down and talk to it. I don't know why, I don't understand the science in it, but the algorithm, may it give viewers and subscribers. But if it doesn't, you know, 
I mean, I'm happy you watched. That's that's really what matters. Yeah. Maybe I'll do a video on like now how I'm jaded and I don't even care if I go viral anymore. <laughs> that sounds so horrible. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe. And yes, I, I know the last few videos. I'm gonna do something about this acne. I promise. Don't leave me here.